I'm never shy about sharing my opinions at the UN. I think it's a useless organization. I think the whole building in New York should be shoved into the East River. But they've really taken the cake now. They have decided to honor a thug, a murderer, and a commie. How? UNESCO. They've decided to include the writings of Che Guevara in their World Register, the inventory of the documents of the documentary collection Life and Works of Ernesto Che Guevara from the original manuscripts of its adolescence and youth to the campaign diary in Bolivia includes 1,007 documents concerning his revolutionary work, essays, newspaper articles, biographical materials, and personal works, as well as his correspondence with different persons and his family. I wonder if they include any of the bullets he used as his executioner for Fidel Castro. Joining me now to explain why this is a problem, Humberto Fontova. He is an author, political commentator, and author of the upcoming book, The Real Che Guevara. Uh, thanks for joining us today, sir. Uh, you, your family, you were born in Cuba. Your family came to the uh, United States after the revolution. You know about The Real Che. Why is this a problem for people that just know him as that cool-looking dude on the shirt? Yeah, well, a lot of people besides me know about it. But the thing is, uh, to put this in perspective, the Castro regime jailed and tortured political prisoners at a higher rate than Stalin's regime during the Great Terror. And they murdered more political prisoners in the first three years in power than Hitler's regime murdered in his first six. Che Guevara was a regime's executioner in the early months of the revolution. The man performed for Fidel Castro essentially what Beria performed for Stalin and what Himmler performed for Hitler. And yet here we are honoring him at the United Stations, an outfit dedicated to peace and love. Yeah, I, I don't understand it. You, you, people don't know the real Che Guevara quite often, though. You do. Uh, I, people that watch this program yeah. probably know a bit more than, than the average person. But why is someone like Che Guevara honored when those other guys you'd mentioned, we wouldn't be honoring Himmler? No, no. The reason is he fell in with the century's top press agent, Fidel Castro. No one else could have created this mythology around a loser and a sadist and a bum like Che Guevara, as did Fidel Castro, who's had the media, the worldwide media, not just the U.S. media, the Canadian media, eating out of his hand like trained pigeons for half a century. And by the way, this Che Guevara mythology only started when Che Guevara was very safely sleeping with the fishes in late 1967. All That's right. Fidel Castro's way. There is a, a congresswoman out of Florida, Elena Ross uh, Lethinen. I, I hope I've pronounced her name right. She's come right, up with a right. statement denouncing this. She says, UNESCO continued its longstanding tradition of making a mockery of its own institution when it opted to venerate and memorialize the life of Che Guevara, including his works in the Memory of the World Register. Now, look, uh, I didn't know the Memory well, of the World Register yeah, existed until this came out. So <laughs> I, I, I don't have a lot of time for the right. U.N., but they do hold sway a bit, and they, they can have clout. And people will talk about UNESCO as the good organization in the UN, even people that don't like it. Uh, what should world governments you, do about when this? It comes can to we the do UN, anything? No. When it comes to the UN, this is same as it ever was. Same as it ever was for the UN. And we're talking about an outfit that had Castro's Cuba, Gaddafi's Libya, Mugabe's Zimbabwe and Belarus on their Human Rights Commission. <laughs> so really, this should not be surprising for most people. Look, while that ceremony was taking place last week honoring Che Guevara, on behalf of the United Nations, Cubans were being beaten and jailed in torture chambers for the crime of quoting the UN Declaration of Human Rights. I'm not making this up, people. You cannot possibly make this stuff up. There's a lot of Canadians that go to Cuba on vacation because it's cheap. Uh, I've yeah. never been. I, I have a friend who went, who I was quite shocked, and he said that the only reason he went right, was right, right. He, wanted, he went on his own, and he wanted to see what it was like, how bad it was under Castro before Castro died. So I, I, I cut him some slack. But what would you say to, to the lot, a lot of Canadians who are just saying, look, I, I want a cheap, sunny vacation, uh, you know, the, the resort seems okay. 
In brief, go to the Dominican Republic. Look, <laughs> I hate to say this on this show because I appreciate the invitation, but the regime's lifeline, and this is everything that Che Guevara did, he did on the orders of Fidel and Raul Castro. Raul Castro and Che were especially tight. As they served as each other's best men in their weddings. Not best men in the Christian sense of a wedding, but in the commie sense of a wedding. But the point is, everything that Che, all those horrendous crimes, were on the orders of the Castro brothers. The main lifeline to that regime nowadays, right after Venezuelan subsidies, is tourism. And Canadians make up the most tourists to Cuba, over a million last year. I hate to say it, folks, but it's the honest truth. Yeah, it's, uh, it, you know, and some of my friends have said, look, what do you want me to do? Well, I've said, go to Dominican. I, go to I, Dominican I hesitate Republic. To say go to, I hesitate <laughs> to say go to Mexico now. I'm not sure it's safe, but go somewhere else. Uh, because we're, we are exactly. propping up a, a horrible regime. It, it, it hasn't gotten better, has it, Umberto? No, it really hasn't. And here's what makes it especially galling to people who know about Cuba. Canada was at the forefront of championing sanctions against South Africa when it was a segregationist regime. Nelson Mandela went to the Canadian Parliament to thank Canadians for championing sanctions, boycotts, embargoes against South Africa. And yet, Canada is one of the main life support systems for a Stalinist apartheid regime in Cuba. I hope, How do you figure that? Hopefully education will change all of that. <laughs> Great speaking to you again, my friend. We'll chat again hopefully. soon.